بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وسيد المرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد Dearest brothers and sisters I pray you are all well Inshallah in today's episode we are going to be speaking about a topic that is absolutely important and that topic is what are the benefits and dangers of social media what are the benefits of using social media platforms and also what are the harms of using social media platform before we proceed it's important that we mention that this may vary from person to person depending on their purpose of usage why they have a social media account what platform they are using and how they are using this platform this will be very much dependent on the individual using the social media platform but inshallah we want to understand this from a religious perspective in light of the Quran and the Sunnah we want to get a good understanding of uh, the benefits of social media and the dangers of social media and the reason I say brothers and sisters that th that this topic is absolutely fundamental this topic is absolutely important social media has become inseparable from our lives social media has become inseparable from the lives of the vast majority of humanity approximately 58 percent of the overall population are actively use using social media take a moment and digest that information 58 percent of the global population are using social media platforms whether it's facebook whether it's instagram whether it's twitter whether it's any other platform 58 percent of the overall population are actively using those platforms so it's important brothers and sisters that we understand this very important topic and inshallah we want to really discover what are the guidelines regarding the usage of uh, social media? If 58% of the overall population are using social media, what does that look like in numbers? In the previous year, 58% of the overall population were using social media. That is approximately 4.26 billion people using uh, social media. This, this was last year, according to Statista, an organization that collects these numbers and records these numbers, they said approximately 4.26 billion people were actively using social media in the previous year. What about the current year? In the current year, up till now, approximately 4.58 billion people are now actively using social media platforms, namely Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, what have you, and all of those other platforms that we haven't even mentioned. Think about that number. That's a huge number we're speaking about. And they have projected that by 2027, approximately 6 billion people will be using social media. That's a huge number. It's important as a believing man, believing woman, that I really understand the guidelines regarding using social media platforms. You may ask the question, what does the Quran say regarding using Facebook? Is there any hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he says that you are allowed to use Instagram or you're not allowed to use Instagram? Inshallah, as we proceed, we will discover that bi Ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, we are living in the United Kingdom. Let us look at some of the numbers on a national scale. In the beginning, we spoke about numbers on a global scale. What about numbers on a national scale? According to the Office for National Statistics, the current UK population is 67 million. And that number is increasing. Out of the 67 million people, approximately 55 million people living in the United Kingdom are actively using Facebook. Take a moment and think about that. That is a huge number. That is near enough 80% or more of the population are actively using social media. Amongst the 67 million people living in the United Kingdom, 
what is the percentage of Muslims? Let's say 5% of the overall population are Muslims. That's a huge number. So it's important that we speak about these topics. It's important that we bring this topic to surface. And the reason is so that we can give some guidelines, inshallah, uh, and, and these guidelines will enable us to use social media accordingly uh, and appropriately. Brothers and sisters, if a person intends to open a social media account, it's absolutely fundamental that they ask themselves three important questions. Three important questions. If you already have a social media account and if you're planning to open a social media account, you want to ask yourself three important questions, three fundamental questions. Number one, what is the purpose of having this account? This is the most important question. Number two is, what am I trying to achieve through my social media platform? That is question number two. And number three is, will this platform be a benefit for me or will it be a detriment? What is the manfa? What is the benefit? Or will this platform be a source of mafsada, detriment, loss, harm for me? These are the three questions that we must ask ourselves. Those of us who have social media accounts already and those who are planning to embark on this journey of having a social media account, I think is absolutely... Uh, a necessity that we really bring to surface these important questions and if we fail to really employ and apply these questions then perhaps social media may become a detriment for us and brothers and sisters I want to really stress this point that social media platform has the potential to be a source of goodness for you if it's used accordingly and appropriately but at the same time if you don't use social media platforms accordingly and appropriately, maintaining important guidelines that we will mention in light of the Quran and the Sunnah, then social media platforms has the potential to damage your relationship with Allah Jalla wa ala. Social media has the potential to damage your relationship with your family. Social media has the potential to damage the relationship between a husband and a wife. Social media has the potential to damage a marital relationship, a relationship between a father and a son, mother and a daughter. And how often we have seen how families have become uh, so separated and distant and families have been destroyed because of the misuse of social media. So we don't want to embark on that journey. We don't want to take that path. The path that we want to take, inshallah, is since social media has become inseparable, and we are not going to detach ourselves from social media. We become very much reliant upon Facebook and Instagram and other platforms for communication and other uh, important matters. Let us look at the guidelines, how we can use this platform for a source of goodness, a source of khair, and how this platform can be used for uh, the pleasure of Allah Jalla wa Ala bi ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, when we speak about the guidelines regarding the usage of social media, number one is we have to purify our intention. As a believing man or believing woman, my acceptance of my ibadah is very much dependent on my niyyah. The prerequisite for uh, uh, the, the deed for it to be accepted is the presence of niya. And this is why the scholars, they said, وَنِيَّتُنَا شَرْطٌ لِسَائِرِ الْعَمَلِ بِهَا الصَّلَاهُ وَالْفَسَادُ لِلْعَمَلِ The acceptance of my deed, the acceptance of my action is very much dependent on my niya. If my niya is pure, then the action will be accepted. And if my niya, meaning my intention is impure, then the action will be rejected. I have to purify my intention. Why do I have social media? Why do I have Facebook? Why do I have Instagram? Why do I have Twitter? Why do I have TikTok and all of those other platforms? That's a question I have to ask myself. And from the get-go, from the very beginning, I have to purify my intention. If my intention is impure, then I will earn the displeasure of Allah. And if my intention is pure, then I will earn the pleasure of Allah Jalla wa ala. The last thing we want, brothers and sisters, is that we use these platforms and they become the reason that we earn the displeasure of Allah. We want these platforms to be the very reason 
that we attain the qurba, the closeness, the pleasure of our Lord, our sustainer, the most merciful, the most kind, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So brothers and sisters, when we ask ourselves the most important question, as we said previously, what is my purpose of having this social media account? If it is to help others, if it is to support others, if it is to aid others, if it is to bring about goodness in our community, if it is to uh, develop society, help society, if it is that we are using this platform because we are concerned about the welfare and well-being of ourselves and people in our community and society as a whole, then you are moving in the right direction. You are on a path that will enable you to use this platform as a source of goodness. Bismillahi ta'ala. Number one, making sure my intention is pure. Number two, I want to ensure that I utilize this platform so much so that on the day of Hisab I stand before Allah and my book is presented to me. وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ Allah says that the one whose book will be presented to him on his right hand, then that's a good sign that person is heading towards Jannah. وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِشِمَالِهِ and the one whom whose book will be presented to him on his left hand, then that person is not in a good position. That person is heading towards Jahannam. When we are presented with our books on the day of Hisab, and that book is open to us, Iqra' kitabaka kafa bi nafsika liyawma alayka hasiba. Allah Jalla wa ala says in Surah Al-Isra, which is also known as Surah Bani Israel, that we will be asked that today it is sufficient for you that you are aware and you know all of the good things that you have done in the life of this world, all of the bad things that you have done in the life of this world. The last thing we want is that we stand before Allah and the book is opened and all I see is Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, that all I've done is I've spent hours and hours of my life, valuable time, precious time, wasted time that was not utilized properly, time that was not utilized effectively and efficiently, all of that time was wasted, was not utilized properly. Rather, it has become the reason that I am sent to Jahannam. We want to open our book, the book that's presented on our right hand, and we open the book and we see, mashallah, I, I, I used Facebook as a source of goodness. I used Instagram for the purpose of da'wah. I used Instagram to call people towards Al-Islam, to tell people and inform them of the path of success, the hereafter, the everlasting life, what real success means. If you use that platform for a source of goodness for yourself and the hereafter, then surely social media platform can have a good impact on you. And of course, it carries great benefit. Brothers and sisters, in the very beginning we said there are benefits of social media and there are detriments, there are harms and dangers of having social media accounts uh, and that varies from person to person. Inshallah, we want to begin uh, by starting off mentioning what are some of the benefits of using social media. How can I use Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok and other platforms uh, as a benefit? Benefit for myself and benefit for, my, for others, benefit for the society, benefit in the place that I live in. And more importantly, a benefit in relation to my relation with my Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number one, brothers and sisters, social media is a good tool for da'wah. What is da'wah? Da'wah is calling to Allah Jalla wa ala ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal maw'idati al hasana Allah Jalla wa ala says call people towards al Islam to the oneness of Allah this pure religion which is free from impurity a sincere clean pure religion the religion of Allah Jalla wa ala call people towards that path wa man ahsanu qawlan mimman da'a ila Allah Allah Jalla wa ala says and who is better in speech than the one who calls to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So da'wah means to call people to the religion of al-Islam, the pure religion, so that they submit, surrender, and they are in a state of absolute obedience to Allah jalla wa ala. And let me give you a practical example. If you had a Facebook account and you shared an image 
an image that consisted of a reminder. You say to someone, my dear brother, my dear sister, do not violate the right of somebody else. You are living in this society. Make sure you live uh, as an upright Muslim, as a good citizen. This is a good nasiha, a good reminder. This platform is now being used for da'wah to remind people about Islam, to remind people about their responsibility, to remind them to be better Muslims. So now every time you share a post and if a person was to practice upon that, you will be given the same reward. Allahu Akbar. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in the hadith, Man da'a ila hudan kana lahu min al ajri mithlu ujuri man tabi'ahu la yanqusu dhalika min ujurihim shay'a. If you call a person towards the deen, and if you teach them something about this religion and every time they practice that you will be given the same amount of reward and that person may teach someone else that person may teach their friends colleagues neighbors peers uh, children and that cycle just continues but you when you pass away from this dunya you're in the life of barzakh in the life of the grave the waiting period until you're raised and you stand before allah your account seems to be increasing. Why? Because you left behind this amazing legacy. You taught somebody something about this religion. So, brothers and sisters, one of the great benefits of social media, it's a great tool for da'wah. Let us use it as a tool of da'wah. Number two, brothers and sisters, uh, many of our brothers, especially the men, the brothers, the youngsters, boys, they have uh, the ability and facility to go to the masjid and learn the deen. There are many dars, durus taking place in different mosques, different institutes. Unfortunately, our sisters are deprived. They don't have much facility like the men. But alhamdulillah, now that we have social media platforms, there are many courses that can be done on social media platforms. If you go to YouTube, if you go to Facebook, Arabic language course, Tajweed course, Quran course, uh, Islamic studies course, Islamic sciences course, Islamic theology. So much a person can study and learn through social media, online learning with a teacher on social media platforms. So it's a great tool for uh, our sisters, especially our sisters who, who don't have the facility. There are many towns in the United Kingdom that don't have a big Muslim community. They don't have Islamic institutes close by, near to them. But now, alhamdulillah, we have social media. Whether they are 300 miles away from a Muslim community, they're able to learn the religion. They're able to develop themselves, develop the understanding of the Quran and the Sunnah because of social media. So that is surely a benefit of having social media. Number one, a great tool for da'wah. Number two, a great tool for learning, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. Number three, brothers and sisters, Social media is no doubt a good platform for Muslim businesses. There are many businesses that are doing, mashallah, very well on social media. An example is a sister has uh, her online shop selling abayas, selling scarves. We may have a brother who's selling thobes, he's selling other Islamic items on, on social media. And if you have a good network, mashallah, you'll be doing very, very well. Uh, you don't have to be based in a shop. You don't have to pay excessive amount of rent and all of the other costs. You, can, you may be working remotely from your house selling all of these products. So there are numerous, numerous benefits, brothers and sisters, and we can go on regarding the benefits of using social media. But it's very important we understand and we really assess and ask ourselves this question. If the loss is greater than the benefit, then surely this is not a platform that I should be on. If the benefit is greater, if the manfa'ah is greater than the mafsada, than the loss, then it is a benefit for me. No doubt there will be goodness in it and there will be some challenges, there will be some problems uh, with social media. But if you, seem that, you see that overall the benefit is greater, then inshallah you may use this platform ta'ala. Another point I wanted to mention, another benefit brothers and sisters, is it has become a good platform for charity organizations. Whether it's Muslim charities or non-Muslim charities, any charity organization that is doing good work, helping the poor and the needy, helping the less fortunate, surely it's a good platform for them to reach out to uh, many people. The work that the charity organizations are doing, they're able to showcase and demonstrate 
the work that they are doing on social media platforms. So charity organisations are using this platform to really reach out to people and it has become a, a platform of uh, benefit. Brothers and sisters, we spoke about the benefits of social media. Now let's move on to the detriment of social media. Number one, addiction. People spending tons and tons of time on social media. Approximately 2.67 hours average a person's on Facebook. And this has increased. This is an average uh, amount of time that is used. It's consuming a lot of time. So be careful. Don't spend too much time. Number two, illicit images, illicit pictures. So we don't want that. Uh, we, do, we don't want to take that route. We want to avoid watching or seeing anything illicit, explicit, that which is haram. And brothers and sisters, let us not create a distance between us and our family because of our social media accounts. Our loved ones are at home. Sometimes we're sitting at home, one person's on that side of the sofa, the other person's on that side of the sofa. We're not conversing, everyone's on Facebook. That's not a good position to be in. And I really want to conclude today's episode with a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to wear a ring. And we know that he used to wear it on this finger. And some narrations say this finger. But this ring was used as a stamp. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to send letters to different regions and provinces, he used to stamp uh, the letter. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he wore this ring, he kept looking at the ring. So the hadith mentions that the Prophet Sallallahu he said, شَغَلَنِي هَذَا عَنْكُمْ مُنْذُ الْيَوْمِ He said to his companions, may Allah be pleased with them, رضي الله عنهم, this ring has kept me busy from you. إِلَيْكُمْ نَظْرَةٌ وَإِلَيْهِ نَظْرَةٌ I keep finding myself looking at you and I keep find my, finding myself looking at the ring. What did the Prophet Sallallahu do? ثُمَّ الْقَاهُ He took the ring off and he put it away. Why did he do that? Because this ring has become a barrier between him and his relationship with his companions and his family and other people. He didn't want that. Today, brothers and sisters, our social media accounts, our mobile phones has become the same barrier. We're so busy on Facebook. We're walking on the street, we are on social media. We're at home, in bed, the last thing we do is social media. We're in our house, we're eating outside in a restaurant, social media. Let us use it properly, effectively, efficiently. And let us not waste our valuable time, brothers and sisters. Let us ensure that this platform has become a source of good for us and a source that will be the salvation in the hereafter. And let us not earn the displeasure of Allah Jalla wa ala through the social media platforms. May Allah accept us all. May Allah keep us in good health. May Allah preserve us and protect us. Until our next episode, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.